Hi, I'm Stephanie, and this is Texas Peach Knits. I hope everyone had a very merry, merry Christmas and is having a wonderful start to the new year. We had a lot of fun over Christmas, probably too much fun, but we had a lot of family coming in and out of town and we did a lot of things with our kids like going to the zoo and my husband was off work for two weeks um, because he's a teacher and they get a two week break and so we did a lot of projects around our house and I pleasantly had quite a bit of knitting time because anytime we go anywhere, I get to knit in the car, which gives me lots of extra knitting time that I wouldn't have on a normal week. I had a lot of chance <laughs> to get good use out of my um, past knitting projects because we had a cold snap uh, mid-December and it got very cold here. It was down to I want to say it got down to single digits, maybe like eight degrees Fahrenheit, which is way too cold. <laughs> but I had on all the hand mitts and I was wearing all of my things to stay warm. And my children and my husband and even some of my friends shared that they um, we're making use of some of the things I have knit in the past. So it is helpful to have a stockpile of hand knit things for cold weather. Um, this episode, I had originally thought to do a 2022 wrap up, share all of my um, statistics from my knitting in 2022, and then talk about a lot of my goals in knitting for 2023, but it really became too long of a podcast once I was putting all my notes together. So I've decided to film a normal um, January knitting podcast where I talk just my normal finished objects, works in progress, um, some acquisitions from over Christmas. Um, I'm even going to throw in a little bit of sewing at the end, and then I'm going to right after I film this episode, since I have some time today, I'm going to film a 2022 wrap up episode with photos of my projects from the whole year, even things that I knit before I started podcasting this year, and all of my different goals and plans for 2023. So this podcast, the January podcast, will go out first, and then I'll work on editing and inserting photos into my um, year-end progress or year-end statistics and my plans for 2023 podcasts, which will go out um, shortly after, maybe next weekend. I, th I thank all of you for watching. It's really been wonderful feeling like I've been able to connect with other knitters, other homeschoolers, um, other homeschoolers who knit, <laughs> other Texans, as well as, you know, people from all over the place. I think it's wonderful. I love having a knitting community. Um, so I think that's all of my intro. You can contact me through Instagram. I'm fairly active. I'm Texas Peach Knits on Instagram, or you can send me an email, texaspeachknits at gmail.com. And you can always comment under this video, which I really appreciate. I love getting comments and I try to get back to responding to them in a timely manner. Um, and liking and subscribing helps too. So let's talk about my finished objects. So the first finished object was my daughter's Helgen socks. The Helgen socks pattern is by Anna Knitter. I will have links to all of my patterns in the show notes below. I had one sock done last 
episode, this one, and then I completed the second sock. Now, this one is quite a bit lighter in color than this one, and I, I did not double check the ball bands to see if they were the same dye lot. They were the same colorway. And I, I did take this uh, ball and finish the leg first. So at least the part that you can really see through my daughter's, above my daughter's shoes, you um, they look pretty similar. So it's not so bad. But so these are size 10 women's US. My 13 year old has giant feet <laughs> and they might grow more. So we shall see. So I'm looking at my notes to see the colorway for Premier Yarns Echo, which is the main color, um, and it's colorway 42-208. Um, the other contrast color is SRK On Your Toes, which I found at a Hobby Lobby, not Hobby Lobby, Tuesday morning a long time ago. Um, and it is in the colorway navy blue. So she really likes these. She's already worn them several times. And um, she would like me to knit her more socks. But I need a break from her very long feet <laughs> sock knitting. It's funny how I, I wear a size 9 and I feel like my socks are faster. But anyways, that's my first FO. Then I finished my socks. These are the God's Promise socks by Anna Knitter. I really enjoyed sewing, uh, knitting this pattern. I thought that it really made this colorway look very festive. You can tell the difference between the stockinette and where you have the stitch pattern. I, I felt like it made it feel more like a wreath or a garland when it was in the stitch pattern. So these are the God's Promise socks. They have this twisted rib at the top um, and this little like curly bit, which is very cute. Um, I knit my own socks, always heel flap. Um, it fits me best because I have a really high instep and I make the heel flap um, about two rows two to you know maybe a little bit more rows longer than what's normally called for in a pattern because I need a lot of space um, between the front of my foot and the back of my heel in order to just get my socks on so um, I have extremely <laughs> extremely high arches and uh, it's like a genetic family Thing. So, but I finished two of these and I've worn them. They, they are so stretched out because I didn't wash them. I'm so sorry. I'm showing you my dirty socks. Um, I'm actually doing laundry today and I forgot to put them in. So, but I love these. I wore these multiple times over Christmas. I wore them on Christmas Day. I think it's just so fun to have um, Christmas socks and I'm already searching for next year's Christmas sock yarn. So I don't know if I'm going to find it um, just by chance or if I'm going to order something. We'll see. Um, the next project I have to show you, I um, it was to give away and I took a video of myself. Um, this idea is from Amy of Noble Character Craft. She often, when she gives something away, she'll try to film before she gives it away and then just puts the clip in. So I tried it this time, and this is going to be my Tooth Fairy Bunny Rabbit, and I will put the clip in here. I'm filming this a day or two ahead of my normal podcast filming because I will likely give away this project tomorrow and I have too many times <laughs> forgotten to film things that I finished before I gave them away and so I wanted to make sure I did this. So this is the bunny tooth fairy 
pillow. It's not a pillow, but so when kids lose their teeth, they like to have something special to put them in. My kids just put them in a Ziploc bag, <laughs> but there's lots of little Tooth Fairy pillows and cute things um, that you can put your teeth in. And one of my friends at church saw the other rabbit that I had made, and she asked me to make a similar but smaller rabbit for her daughter to be a Tooth Fairy pillow. So this rabbit has a little sweater that has this pocket. The pocket is right here and it's just big enough to put one or maybe two teeth into. Um, this is the same pattern that I did before. It's called Frankie the Bunny. Very highly modified and it is in the book Cutest Crochet Creations by Allison North. So I followed most of the numbers for this pattern, except instead of using worsted weight yarn like I did last time, I used fingering weight yarn. And the yarns I used were Trekking Pro Natura, which is 75% wool and 25% bamboo. And the sweater, I used the leftovers from my daughter's Hermione Everyday Socks, um, this Premier Yarns Deborah Norville collection in the Paprika colorway. So I made sure to use most of the pink, and because she requested a mostly pink sweater. So this is all the pink on the sweater. So the tail and the eyes of the bunny are embroidery floss and the nose and the inside of the ears are knit picks comfy in the uh, fingering weight. And I bought several colors of this to make clothes for um, my children's knitted animal friends, which I made a couple of years ago. I still haven't made the clothes for their animals. But I have the yarn and I knew I wasn't going to use all of this for that so I was able to use it for this little guy so uh, I modified the pattern by making the head more round and I added legs to the feet on the pattern the feet are just kind of attached to the front so he's always sitting so this little bunny I decided it he needed legs so that he, she, he or she could sit and um, went ahead and made this little sweater, just a top-down raglan. I guessed on the numbers. I did six for each sleeve and eight across the front and then just increased every other row until it was the size that I wanted. And I have one by one rib at the neck on the sleeves and at the bottom of the sweater. In order to attach the pocket, I did a few purl stitches where I wanted the bottom of the pocket to be, and then I picked up stitches after I had knit the sweater and knit up the pocket, did the one by one rib at the top, and then just um, stitched the two sides down. And that's how I did the pocket. Um, I think the bunny turned out really cute and I hope my friend's daughter really enjoys it and I'm looking forward to hearing about her losing her first tooth and getting to use it as a tooth fairy pillow. So thank you for letting me pop on and show you this finished object. Okay, so you just saw my Tooth Fairy Bunny Rabbit, and sadly, the next two items that I finished in December, I did not film before I gave them away. One was a hat for one of my very best friends, and the other one was the Christmas present I knit for my parents. I made them a set of Christmas 
Nomi's. So the first one is the hat for my friend. So early in December, she was having kind of a difficult week and we were talking and she mentioned that she had always planned on learning to knit a hat um, and me helping her, but she never had had time for that and she finally gave up and she just bought a hat. She's like, I don't even like the hat. I just, you know, I just haven't had time and I needed a hat. And I was, I felt so bad. I said, you should have told me I would have knit you a hat. And I, so I knit her another hat. So now she has two. And do you know how, I don't know if everyone does this, but I have a tendency to occasionally hyper focus on something where I really can't do anything else until that thing is done. And in some cases it's a good thing, in other cases I'm sure it's an unhealthy characteristic because I get so focused that I really do stop doing almost everything else. But in this case, I was able to finish her hat in less than 24 hours. It turned out so adorable. And I made it out of washable wool yarns. So here are the leftovers. This is the mystery yarn. It's falling apart. This was given to me by a friend. Oh look, it's the same color as my wall. <laughs> I used Knit Pick Swish Worsted in Lemongrass Heather. So that is a washable um, wool. I used this Wool of the Andes Super Wash, also by Knit Picks. And this colorway is called Blossom Heather. And then I used Wool of the Andes Super Wash in Rouge. These are just some skeins, single skeins that I had laying around and I ended up holding them two at a time uh, and kind of making a fade for the hat. The pattern was called uh, Old Pappy Cappy and it's from the Pints and Pearls Knitting Book which is all about easy projects you can knit while you are having an adult beverage. <laughs> And that book has a really funny story because uh, last Mother's Day, my uh, kids really wanted to get me some Mother's Day gifts, and I didn't want to put a lot of pressure on my husband to find, you know, the perfect thing or to have to spend a lot of money because it was really just them wanting to gift me something. So I said, well, why don't you take them to a thrift store? and let them find me things and they actually did really well I was surprised and one of the gifts um, from one of my sons was this pints and pearls knitting book which I thought was hilarious that he got me the the drinking knitting book I think it was probably the only knitting pattern book there which is why he got it but um, some of the patterns are cute and they're easy so I made that and so I modified the pattern quite a bit. I thought it turned out beautiful and I have plans to make more of that hat because it was very fast, especially with the yarn held double and I have lots of single skeins of colors that I can mix up and make more hats. The last finished object is the Christmas Nomies and I forgot who this pattern was by I think it's a Suzanne I can't remember her last name but I will um, put it below and I will link it in the um, description so my parents are very challenging to buy Christmas presents for and my mom collects um, Mr. and Mrs. Santa um, salt and pepper shakers so, and she loves Christmas decorations. So I know that she does that. And then my dad loves gnomes and he collects garden gnomes, mainly for outside. So I decided everybody's been knitting these cute gnomes. I'm going to knit them a pair of Mr. and Mrs. Christmas gnomes. 
I found a pattern. I mostly followed the pattern. I used um, sock yarn scraps that I had, and I had some merino yarn that Anna Knitter had sent me in a box when I first started my podcast, and I was so excited to be able to use some of her yarn um, in something so special. So I'll share photos. My parents loved them, and I'm sure they'll show up every Christmas now, and I'll get to visit <laughs> visit them. Um, so that's the end of my finished objects for December. Okay, so now we're going to talk about my current whips. Um, these are things I did work on a little bit in December, but they are not very close to being finished. The first is my blueberry waffle socks. Uh, because I have figured out how to knit myself socks where they fit and they're comfortable, I am just all about the sock knitting. Um, Another thing is I love having them in my purse. Like they're so small to carry around in your purse and take in the car. I have found them very convenient to work on when I'm out um, running errands, doing things with the kids, and waiting. I know everybody agrees who is a sock knitter. That is all the things that socks are awesome for. Um, I am knitting them out of an opal subscription ball of yarn which is really exciting because Anna Knitter included this in the box to me and here's what I have of the yarn so this is not does not have a colorway name and I'm not sure that it has ever come out in a collection so it is one of those one-of-a-kind subscription opals and I have been so spoiled I really haven't knit opal before I think I've maybe had a ball a few years ago it knits up so nice like it really has great stitch definition and the colorway changes are fun I'm really really enjoying it so um, I decided not to do a contrast um, cuff on these socks I really wanted to have the opal yarn go all the way to the top but I did do a contrast heel and I'm halfway down the foot maybe a third of the way down the foot so this is my blueberry waffle socks and I ended up using a skein of um, knitters brewing co sockaholic solid this is in the watermelon fizz colorway and I never use the whole skein of yarn for a pair of socks. So I went ahead and I wound off 10 ounces to use as the contrast color in these opal socks because I thought the uh, orangey red really brought out this orangey red that's just in these socks a little bit. And I thought it looked really fun. And what I'll probably do is I'll weigh my opal when I get close to the toe and if I still have much more than half I will go ahead and do the toe like continue the toe in the opal and just have the contrast as the heel but I can always put it in the toe as well so I'm really happy with these I can't wait to have them done and wear them they're kind of my new year new year socks so those are fun so, and those are on my Make 9 2023 board, which I'll be sharing in the um, 2022 Wrap Up 2023 Goals uh, podcast that I will film next. My next whip is the Hamra sweater, um, which I didn't write down the um, designer, but I will put that below. This is an old whip that I started when my daughters were much younger and after visiting my niece over Thanksgiving I decided to finish it and gift it to her and it has these garter ridge bumps which if you look at the projects other people have done most people either have done it solid or have made these garter ridge bumps all the same color 
but I had done a rainbow baby blanket for a friend. It's kind of like a muted rainbow. And I had leftovers of all the Brava sport, like little bits left over from the blanket. So I decided to use each color as a stripe. And I really like the way it turned out. The background color and what the rest of the sweater is going to be is this Brava sport in the fairy tale colorway, the purple fairy tale colorway. I really enjoy working with Brava sport. I feel like it's a great kid wear um, yarn and the um, the worsted too but the sport kind of knits up like a DK to me so I feel like it's really flexible and the colors are just so bright and cheerful so this is gonna be really cute she's four now and I believe I was knitting a size 10 but I looked at the pattern and there was enough similarity between some of the sizes that I went ahead and um, started I didn't add as many stitches under the arm to make it not be as large as a 10 and then hopefully by the time I'm finished my niece will be able to wear it and I think it's gonna be really sweet I'll have to pick out some cute buttons so that's also on my make nine list because I would like to finish that this year my last whip that I've been working on is something very special to me. It is from when um, Madeline Tosh had a store in Fort Worth called the Mad Tosh Yarn Store. It has since closed. And it was back when I really had a very strict yarn budget. I had lots of little 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 kids so not a lot of knitting time and I was trying to balance you know making things I thought were more beautiful with you know taking care of my family and being reasonable about my budget so I don't know if I was insane but I thought it was a good idea to knit a lace weight cardigan because I thought lace weight is so economical. You get so much yardage from a skein of lace weight. And I would only need two skeins to knit a cardigan. What I didn't take into consideration was that when you have a lot of little ones and you're not sleeping a lot and everyone's interrupting you all the time, it's very difficult to knit lace out of lace weight. So I chose the Ro Rocio, Rocio sweater by Hohi Locatelli. It's in the Spring Showers collection which I sh shared another sweater that I knit from that collection. And this has been sitting in my on my yarn shelf still in the bag that I bought the yarn in since 2013. Yeah. I still want this sweater. I still think it's beautiful and I love the yarn, but it's 10 years old. I started it in January of 2013, which makes me think the yarn was a birthday present um, in 2012. So this is old. <laughs> I mean, it's not ancient, but it's old. So this is the Rocio sweater, and I just have the, this is the original printout that I printed. It has a lace pattern on the back, and then the rest of the sweater is all reverse stockinette lace weight. And this is the yarn. It is Mad Madeline Tosh Prairie in the Copper Penny colorway, which I love this color. And it is so teeny. 
and it has actually been discontinued. They no longer make this um, yarn base. They no longer dye on this yarn base. So I have worked on this about three days now. Um, I'm trying not to have it be all tangled. So this is mostly what I already had done and then I've added about an inch. So this is the back of the sweater. And this is the this is the top. Let me see if I can stretch it out a little. Ah, ah. So it's a lace leaf pattern with bobbles. I don't know if you can see the bobbles. It is so beautiful. It's like so delicate. It's definitely going to need blocking. But Anna Knitter is doing a daily dedication prompt 2023 and I will be working on this sweater every day for at least a minute. And the reason I said a minute is because I often start something and then something happens with my kids or my family or, you know, I have to stop. And I don't want to feel guilty that I can't get in a full amount of time. And I think that's fine. But if I pick it up every day, at least pick it up and start working on it, I'm going to get a lot more of it done than when it's just sitting on my yarn shelf in the bag I bought the yarn in. So this is lovely. I love this yarn. It is so very old. <laughs> and I can't believe I, when I looked up, I knew it had been a long time. But when, then I, when I saw that it was 10 years old, I thought, it's time. You have to finish this or, or tear it out. So I'm going to finish it. And that is going to be my uh, daily dedication for 2023. And my husband wanted us to listen to Father Mike Schmidt's Bible in a Year podcast this year. So while we're listening to that every night, I'm going to try to work on this too, as well as other times during the day um, if I have a chance to pick it up. But definitely during the Bible in a Year podcast, I'll work on this. So that is that. All right. Now the fun part, the acquisitions. Um, actually, before I do acquisitions, I should talk about what I'm wearing. I forgot this at the beginning. So this is the Molt Noma shawl, which I looked it up and it's no longer available free on Ravelry. The designer took it off of Ravelry in 2020 when Ravelry was redesigned and many people were having problems with the redesign with um, headaches and things. And so she, I, I don't know if she was affected. I really don't know the whole story. And so she decided to take the pattern off of Ravelry. But she has information on her project page, um, on the pattern page. If you are interested in getting this pattern, she requests that you contact Ravelry about adjusting their settings to help people that are affected um, by the redesign. And I have no idea, I really haven't looked into it at all, whether or not any of those changes have been made. So I mainly use Ravelry as a reference at this point. So, um, But this is the Multnomah shawl. It was a free pattern on Ravelry and I knit this in 2013. I think 2013 was a big year for me and knitting. Um, this yarn was the second thing that I spun on my Ashford Traveler, which I received for Mother's Day in 2013. And it is Into the World in the Lavinia colorway. So I spun the yarn um, and then I knit the shawl in 2013. The the yarn was dyed by Into the World as a part of the Into the World and Knittables. 
do you remember Knittables? I used to watch the Knittables podcast. She was so wonderful and had cute little bulldogs. And I really don't know what, where she is now, but if she's out there, I loved your podcast. It really was inspiring to me as a young knitter. Um, it was their Downton Abbey spin along. So it was Downton Abbey colorway ideas and we all spun along and then I I don't know if knitting it was part of it. I really don't remember. Uh, but this is what I made and I love it. It's one of my special, special things because it was um, one of my first spins on my spinning wheel. So I do love it. Acquisitions. So it was Christmas time. I didn't get tons of knitting Christmas presents, but I did get a few things. One of which was this book, A Season's Tale by Kim Hargreaves. This is a Rowan publication. And I got this off of Thrift Books, which you, if you haven't used Thrift Books, it is an online used bookseller and it's my favorite. But I took a chance with this one. This one was called Acceptable um, because you can rarely find these old Kim Hargreaves knitting books and there's just a lot of really awesome staple knit patterns many for children as well as adults in this and it is um, photographed beautifully and set in the Scottish countryside so it's like taking a little journey while you look at the book so I'm hoping maybe to knit a sweater out of this there's several um, sweater patterns that are very just like classic looks that I thought would be uh, fun to knit from this so I got this for myself and then my little sister who I visited in Tucson got me a knitting bag she came over here for Christmas and went to the stockyards in Fort Worth and she got this fascinating bag if this is a little just like zipper pouch um, that I'm keeping my sock project in for my purse but it came in this fascinating clear purse which I think for some people this is a thing and you, you put this into the clear the clear tote to keep your things that you don't want people to see in and then you can put other things um, I'm definitely using it all for knitting things and I think the clear tote shows off my yarn so pretty <laughs> And I don't think I would walk around with this, but it's fun to have at home. And as you can tell with my yarn acquisitions, there is a color theme. Do you see a color theme? So these are my yarn acquisitions. But before I show you each of those individually, the reason my sister saw this and thought to buy it for me was because while I was in Tucson visiting her, I got this little pouch. And this was my souvenir from the Tucson Sonora Desert Museum. And I had been looking for a little pouch to keep in my purse with my scissors and my measuring tape and things in it. And I wanted something really sturdy that wasn't going to um, have everything spill out into my purse. So I had bought this. Then she saw the larger one and thought they needed to be together. And they're not exactly the same pattern, but I think it's lovely. So, and then the larger bag is now maybe going to be my yarn showcase, I guess. So from Tucson, I went to the Birdhouse Yarn Store because I enjoy buying yarn when I'm on vacation as like a souvenir. It doesn't always, you know, it doesn't always a local yarn. Um, it just depends on what I see at whatever 
yarn store they have. So at this yarn store they had this Regia Atelier color and it's kind of a purple and tan and I just thought these would be really nice looking socks for me. And then Michelle in Houston had sent me this skein of yarn with her box for my husband. My husband, his school, the school colors are this bright green color. Like that's the school, that in navy, I think. And so he really likes having things in this bright green color. So he asked me to make him a cowl out of this. And this is a socks that rock 81% superwash merino and 19% silk and it's in the flash colorway. I think this is from a superheroes subscription or something like that. But I thought oh I really like it except I think it needs more green. So at the birdhouse knit store I found this. This is one of those little um, minis. And this is dyed in Tucson. This is Dream in Color Classy in the color Prickly Pear, which is a cactus. So I thought if I put these two together to make his cowl, it would look really nice. So and then he could wear it on his way to work. So this was a locally dyed, local dyer, um, big name though. I, I didn't realize um, they were from there. But, and I love this prickly pear color and it's the perfect color for his school colors. So those are gonna go together and that's part of my make nine. And then my last acquisition was a total surprise. Um, one of the good things about Starting this YouTube channel was I created a public Instagram account. I'd always had a private Instagram account and I couldn't participate in any make-alongs or any knit-alongs because no one could see my hashtags. Um, so I decided starting this podcast that I would make a public Instagram account to go along with it and then I'd be able to participate. So surprise, surprise, I won Amy from Noble Character Crafts Make 9 2022 Mal, which I was not expecting. It was a total surprise. I was so excited um, when I was watching her episode, and she actually called my name. So it's really exciting to win. <laughs> it's really exciting to win. So... Uh, I'm hoping to do more giveaways here, particularly when I reach a thousand subscribers. So make sure you subscribe because I have some things to give away. Um, and I'm not yet to the point where I feel like I can host a knit along or make along because I'm small beans and I'm still participating in everybody else's. So I might, I don't know, we'll see. But so this is what I won. It's a dragon horde yarn. And it is, I mean, it's like this color palette. Come on, guys. This is amazing. And then with this one, they all kind of go together. And she included this adorable gingerbread stitch marker or progress keeper. And I'll have to make use of this to start showing where I was on my projects. So this Dragon Horde yarn colorway is called Persephone, which is mythology. That's cool. And it's so fun. It is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. So I will be able to make socks out of this, which would be great. Let's see if there's anything else I need to talk about. Oh, but there's more. Not acquisitions. Just a minute. This is a new segment. It's the sewing segment, and I'm going to throw it at the end 
so that if you're not interested in sewing, you don't have to stay and watch. So the knitting portion of today's podcast is now over. Thank you for watching if you were just here for the knitting. Now, if you're interested in sewing, I am not a professional sewist. I'm still learning, but I'm getting more excited about being able to sew some of my own things and some of my own clothes. So I was watching Emily and the Woldenburn podcast, which is a fabulous podcast. She's so interesting and has so many fun hobbies, plus a very cute baby, so I highly recommend her. She went to Hobby Lobby and snagged some clearance fabrics, and I was just in a mood that day to go to my Hobby Lobby, so I went to go see if they had any fabrics for me, and they did. So I found this bumblebee cotton, which is very, very cute. And I've always wanted to sew myself a an apron. Now, I don't, you know, I'm not the perfect little housewife, but I do from time to time need to do things in a dress or need to do things when I'm in nicer clothes. And I have aprons that I've bought, but having the band around the back of my neck really bothers me. It really, it gives me a headache. So... I decided I was going to learn how to um, sew an apron that had a cross back. So I actually did. I found a YouTube tutorial and I'll link it below. It tells you basic measurements and then how to extend the measurements for a larger size, which I did. Um, and it worked out beautifully. So this is my apron. And it's just a simple um, smocked apron with it. Not smocked. Is this a smock? Pinafort for type apron with a top part and then a gathered waist skirt. And the skirt goes around to the back. And there are long ties to tie it. These are almost too long. If I make it again, I would shorten the length of the ties. And it has the crisscross back. So I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> it's funny seeing myself peek around the side. So it has a crisscross back and long ties and the gathered apron. So this looks really cute on with a dress and it doesn't hurt the back of my neck when I wear it. So this fabric was maybe three dollars a yard at Hobby Lobby which I don't think you can really beat that actually I did I did beat that but it was a great deal so this is really cute and I like to plant sunflowers in the spring we get those like giant eight foot tall sunflowers in our yard and uh, someday we would like to have bees but we only have one acre of land and I don't know if we would be able to keep our bees healthy if they did a lot of construction behind our house because we have a we back up to a ranch which is wonderful because we don't have backyard neighbors but the property someday will be developed so and I guess I shouldn't make all my life decisions based on someday developing but that is that so that's my first sewing project the other one is that I'd really like to sew myself a dress. So I've been kind of keeping an eye out for fabric. And I had an Ellie and Mac pattern for a staycation tiered dress, which I'll try to share a photo of the dress. And it's just a knit dress with um, tiered a tiered skirt. Um, and at Hobby Lobby, they had this knit fabric these are like my favorite colors look I'm wearing them today <laughs> for two dollars a yard so I bought all of it I was just give me all the rest of it and I will have plenty to make that dress out of so I'm going to be working on that in the near future 
and then I was chatting in the Anna's Knit Club telegram group with another knitter who also liked to sew and she suggested the hinterland dress by so liberated and I'll share a photo and she also said that she often would buy sheets to make dresses out of because it's a really economical way to get a large amount of fabric and I had never really thought about that but then the next time I was at a thrift store there was this gorgeous sheet in perfect condition. I don't think anyone had used it. And it's clean size, so it's plenty of fabric for a dress. And so this is the fabric. And I'm planning to make a hinterland dress out of this fabric and it'll be a really good practice at making that pattern. It's such a customizable pattern um, and there's so many different ways you can make it. I would love to make versions for my daughters, different versions for myself, and so this is going to be a practice run. So then, this is the last one. There is another one, but I didn't bring it in the shed, so I'll have to share it next time. I went a little crazy. <laughs> At another thrift store, I found some Kirkland Pima cotton, a Kirkland Pima cotton sheet, which also looked brand new. And these have all been washed. I'm not gonna like hold people's dirty sheets. That's kind of weird. And this is kind of in a pinkish chocolate color. I don't know if this is my color or not, but I really need a slip. And I thought this actually might make a great slip for underneath other dresses um, and I found a free pattern online called the camisole sundress it's actually a sundress but I would not wear it as a dress I would wear it under other dresses as a slip um, and so I'm gonna try making that out of this and I actually bought the top and bottom sheet of this so I might make another hinterland out of this as well. We'll see how it goes. I know that's very, that's a lot of things. But I like to make things, so you understand. <laughs> and we'll see. And I don't have timelines. I don't have a deadline. It's just sometime this year, very possibly during the summer when my husband is on summer vacation. And I will work on those and I just I think it's amazing when people sew their own clothes and are able to customize things to fit themselves I want to be able to do that so I'm gonna work on it I think that's everything I think that's all of my December wrap-up and all of my crazy ideas I really appreciate you watching and um, stay tuned for my 2022 project wrap up in statistics and all of my 2023 goals there will be quite a few that I didn't share um, in this episode because I knew it was going to get too long so have a great day and a great week please share all any thoughts in the comments and I hope to see you all again soon bye